Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. I'm Mandy. Today we're making Chao Mi Tai Mu. Chao is stir fry. Mi Tai Mu is Taiwanese rice noodles. This is one of those homemade recipes for all Taiwanese people. These noodles are homemade. You can check out my previous video to learn how to make them. It's very easy and fun. I don't know where you can buy them, but this recipe is not limited by the types of noodles. The best replacement will be Japanese udon noodles because they are thick and pleasantly chewy. You can also use pasta, egg noodles, lo mein noodles. No matter what you use, you have to pre-boil them until 80% cooked, then drain and set it aside for the stir fry. Besides the noodles, you will also need a half pound of skinless pork belly. Slice it into a quarter of an inch thick slabs. You can also use thick cuts of bacon as a replacement, but you will have to adjust the saltiness in this recipe. Put the slabs together and dice them into a quarter of an inch thick pieces. The pork belly is going to provide the oil for the cooking. If you change to a leaner cut, you have to add more cooking oil or butter to make up the shortage. Set the pork aside. Three shallots. Discard the root and peel the outer layers. Cut the shallots in half, then slice them thinly. They look like mini red onions, but more intense in flavor. Try not to use red onion as a replacement because this is the significant ingredient that makes this recipe Taiwanese. 5 Dried Shiitake Mushrooms I soaked them in water 2 hours in advance. Now they are nice and soft. Squeeze the water out and cut them into slices. Dried Shiitake Mushrooms have much more flavors compared to the fresh ones because they have developed lots of umami taste during the dehydration process. A couple of baby bok choy. These are pretty big in size. If yours are small, you may need a few. Slice the stem part smaller and cut the leaf part in half. I like to use quite a lot of greens in my stir-fry noodles for color and nutrition purpose. You can use other vegetables, such as cabbage, carrot, celery. Besides that, I minced 1 tablespoon of garlic. Optionally, add a few Thai bird eye chilies. These are super hot. I sliced them into big pieces so you can notice them easily in the stir-fry. That way, no one will bite into it by accident. I rinsed a handful of bean sprout. You don't need to remove the roots because they are edible. Before we turn on the heat, let's put together the sauce. You will need 1 and a half tablespoon of soy sauce, 1 and a half tablespoon of oyster sauce, 2 teaspoon of dark soy sauce for the color. Last ingredient is a little bit special. 1 tablespoon of XO sauce. This is a Hong Kong style sauce that are made with dried seafood, cured meat, and lots of aromatics. You can make it yourself by following this recipe or buy it from the Asian market. If you cannot find it, you can skip it, but use half tablespoon of oyster sauce to make up the sodium shortage. Oyster sauce also have a strong seafoody umami flavor so this dish will still turn out good. Okay, let's turn the heat to medium and heat up the wok a little bit. Add the diced pork belly and stir to render the fat out. I know a lot of people don't like pork fat. It's just the same as bacon fat. It provides some creaminess for the noodles. Very delicious. This is probably the leanest pork belly that I have ever seen. It has been a few minutes now and still no pork fat pulling out. 
I knew that it's going to happen when I was cutting the pork. Luckily, I have some lard in my fridge, so I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons. It's funny. <laughs> Most of the times, I prefer to use lean pork belly, but not today. Well, keep stirring until all the pork is golden brown. That looks good. Remove the pork from the wok. Be sure to tilt the wok so you can leave the oil behind. Turn the heat back on medium low. We will use the oil to fry the shallot, which will develop a complex fragrance and bring this dish to another level. Stir constantly so the shallots don't burn. When you see the edge of the shallots are slightly golden, you can add the minced garlic. Garlic takes less time to fry, that's why I add it a little bit late. Keep stirring for two to three minutes, or until the shallots and the garlic are completely golden brown. That looks nice. I'm going to add some sun-dried baby shrimp. This is optional. If you don't have it. You can skip it or use some minced dried shrimp as a replacement. It provides a pungent seafood flavor, which is why I like to use it. Continue by adding the shiitake mushroom slices and the Thai bird eye chilies. Stir for a couple of minutes to activate the flavor and the aroma. Throw in the stem part of the baby bok choy. Keep cooking until the bok choy stem is a little bit soft. This smells so good already. Let's add the noodles. Introduce the pork back to the wok. Follow up with the bean sprout and the leaf part of the baby bok choy. Pour in the sauce. Switch to a pair of tongs to fluff the noodles. Rice noodles like to stick to the bottom of the wok, so just do your best to mix all the seasonings before the noodles get stuck. And if they do get stuck, you can add a splash of water to lubricate everything. The noodles are pre-cooked, so all we are doing is to heat it up. You don't need to stir the noodles for too long, otherwise they will break up into short pieces. We're done. You should taste to adjust the flavor, but I have made this many times. I know the flavor is good. Let's serve because I just can't wait to try it. The fried shallot and the pork fat really made a big difference. The noodles becomes rich and creamy. The combination of the XO sauce and the dried baby shrimp. Creates a pungent seafoody umami taste. This unique flavor pairs really well with thick, chewy noodles like these. I also tried this recipe with udon noodles and fettuccine. They came out delicious as well. I hope you give this a try soon. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Thank you for watching. This video is sponsored by Souped Up Recipes Carbon Steel Wok. This is the wok that I'm selling, and I am proud to recommend it to you, as I have been using it on my channel for years. It is lightweight. It responds to heat changes quickly and evenly. It can also sustain super high temperature without damage. Perfect for Chinese cooking. If you like Chinese food and you want to learn how to make it at home better than your local takeout. Then you definitely need one of these, as it is the most basic Chinese cookware. The link is in the description. Go check it out. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.